Hello, and welcome to Metro Arts. I am your host, Rachel Simone. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll talk to choreographer Tracy Halloran Pearson and see a performance by Contextra Dance, and we'll explore the work of sculptor and furniture designer Richard Bennett. But first, here's Bluegrass and Americana Band, The Whistle Stop Review, with A Minor's Dream. Welcome to Metro Arts. Now, that was an incredible song we just heard. What was the inspiration behind that song? Uh, really, I picked up a guitar that had a capo on it, and the melody line just kind of spoke to me. I just like played it. It was, it was kind of just an inspiration right in the moment, and Joe was there with me that day. And, and I heard about it through the grapevine, yeah, and yeah. we just developed it. We <laughs> actually co-wrote it. it, yeah. He was like, Blake, I had a really great great thing going and uh, yeah just through the course of rehearsal we've done a couple of co-writes like this for these instrumentals and uh, so it's a lot of fun we kind of start out with that raw idea that raw inspiration and uh, and make it into something presentable <laughs> now how did you all start playing together uh, really 
Joe and I are cousins, and so we have kind of a family background with the music, and uh, I learned bluegrass down in the Appalachia area in West Virginia, and I came back up here, and Joe was like, hey, let's do a project, and you know, Rick, I, I, roped I, in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Joe and Rick knew each other before I knew Rick, so um, we just kind of thought it would be a good idea to, to do a project. Now, when did you start playing bluegrass? Probably 2007-ish is when I kind of got into it. I had lived down in West Virginia for a couple of years and uh, brought it back up here with me because no one, I don't, nobody I knew really knew what it was. So it was kind of nice to, to, you know, bring that music style up here. Now, what do you want your audience to get from your music? Uh, hopefully, you know, they have a good time and, and just, you know, we try to bring... Uh, what it is that he brought up here that uh, I have a little background in, in the folk tradition as well. And that's that, uh, that, that back porch feeling, you know, that, yep. that real sitting in the mountains. Uh, and because the songs are good, the stories are good, and, and, and it's fun, fun music. So we try to, to take that and, and bring it to a stage, whether it be, you know, a, a pub or, or a festival stage. We play all kinds of them in between. So, uh, and hopefully we bring a little of that, you know, a little of that, that old time feeling that, that, that it was built on, you know. So far, what's been your favorite experience as a group? Uh, I don't know. We've, had, we've had some really good <laughs> Porcupine. Nights. Yeah, we played some Mountain great festival. Yeah, was a really some great festivals, festival. Met some just cool people and very welcoming. Great food all over this. Yeah, yeah, we travel. toured the whole, the whole Midwest. <laughs> so really, it's a great experience. We love all the cities, you know, uh, and we're all uh, outdoor enthusiasts. So we're kind of out, you know, enjoying the scenery as, as we go. And hopefully sometimes, you know, we have a little time to actually get out and do hikes and, and do little stuff, do little camping trips. Yep. But uh, yeah, we go all over from the UP, you know, down into the Appalachia. So, you know, the whole thing's a lot of fun. Now, the next song we're going to hear is Endless Love. Tell yes. me about that song. Uh, I wrote that song. Uh, this, that's actually going to be on the new CD coming up. And uh, it's just, I was into uh, some really old time country music, real country western, uh, if, so to speak, uh, Hank Williams Sr. and George Jones and some of these people. And it's just kind of one of those songs that uh, I wrote because uh, I was inspired by those kind of simple songs, those simple melodies. And uh, the story is just kind of, you know, like a cumulative of, of all probably the heartbreak in my life <laughs> set into one little story, you know, maybe not an actual event, you know, but a lot of them. <laughs> And how can people find out more about you? Uh, TheWhistleStopReview.com, www.TheWhistleStopReview.com, and review is spelled R-E-V-U-E. -E. Right. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Hey, thank you very Thanks much. For you. Once again, here's The Whistle Stop Review. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. My heart is breaking Sends me that you're not around Trying to hold my head up high Hoping someday you might come back down To my side of town Well I walk the streets hoping just to see you When I do it makes me sadder still See a new man makes you smile I guess he goes that extra mile for you That I never did Tonight there is music on the boardwalk I love to hear them old boys sing the blues Lonely hearts are crying for an endless love the kind of love I thought I had
I started picking up the pieces Stepped outside and put on my walking shoes Dusted off this old guitar Played myself a few old country songs And howled at the moon Tonight there is music on the boardwalk I love to hear them old boys sing the blues The lonely hearts are crying for an endless love crying for an endless love kind of love I thought I had with you kind of love I thought I had with you we'd like to welcome Richard Bennett to our Midtown studio at Wayne State welcome to Metro Arts thanks Rachel now you're a sculptor and furniture designer. Mm -hmm. When did you start designing? Um, it's been um, a long journey. It's probably about uh, 40 years ago. Um, you know, I started working uh, as a sculptor and doing the art festivals and art fairs around uh, the metro area. Uh, that kind of evolved into uh, me wanting to start with designing furniture and and tables and lighting and things like that. So it's been a, it's been a like a long little journey here so far. Yeah. So 40 years is a long time to do anything, yeah. and you're a self-taught artist. How has your work evolved? Well, it's, it's an evolution of sorts. You, you, uh, you, know, you started off small, you know, or I started off small building the, the smaller pieces, you know, tabletop works and things like that. Um, after that, you know, I started getting commissions, and, and people started to see my work and like it, uh, thank God. And, um, it kind of evolved into, uh, you know, building lar larger pieces, and you know, I have a desire in my, uh, in my own account to uh, design and build things on a larger scale as well. So, uh, it, it's been a kind of an evolution over this time, over those years. Yeah. So, what's your is inspiration for creating? Um, you know, there's a number of uh, places I gather my inspiration from. Um, you know the. Uh, you know, the African works in the uh, Egyptian empire, you know, some of the ancient works from that uh, time period. Uh, some of your modern day designers like the Deco period. Um, I have a big influence from uh, the animal life, uh, you know, as you can see from bulls and gazelles and, and some of the creatures that inhabit the planet. Uh, you know, I think is, is uh, a lot of times uh, we don't take appreciation for the uniqueness of uh, some of these uh, animals and. Uh, and creatures here on the planet that we share. So it's kind of a way of me, um, you know, you know, giving a tip of the hat to uh, Mother Nature and to the creation. Yeah. Now we have some of your work in studio. Okay. So we have your sculpture, the gazelle piece, which okay. there's a larger piece at Belle Isle. Yeah. yeah. How did you create this? Um, that was kind of a, a piece that um, was inspired by watching uh, the Thompson gazelles. You know, they're they're very powerful creatures, and they they have speed. And you know, especially when a lion or or a cougar or something's chasing them, and that kind of inspired me to uh, do an abstract uh, type piece, a version of that. And and kind of the exercise was to try to bring motion and movement to a, a steel piece, uh, you know, that weighs maybe six thousand pounds, and and. Uh, and, and give it a motion and, and kind of flirt with gravity of, in the source, you know, like they do. Yeah. Now, in addition to sculpting, you're also an interior designer. Uh -huh. What type of furniture do you design? Um, the, my style is basically contemporary. Um, I like to work with stainless steel and bronze and, and glass. Uh, and I like to use a, a light, different kind of wood veneers. There's a lot of beautiful exotic uh, woods out there that I like to incorporate in my furniture as well. But basically, my, my furniture will take on, uh, you know, more of a contemporary, modern type uh, design look. And I'll, I'll try to, like, either, you know, throw some, uh, you know, some movement and motion in, into some of the furniture pieces as well. Now, we have a piece of your furniture, the okay. dolphin table right yeah. here. Yeah, thanks. Explain yeah. this creation to us. Um, again, it was kind of inspired by the, uh, you know, we were uh, in Hawaii and we were um, on a tour on a boat. 
uh, out in the ocean, and there was a, just a herd of dolphins or a pod of dolphins. I don't know the correct uh, name for it, but uh, they kept following the boat and just watching them arch over and jump out of the water kind of gave me a, uh, uh, you know, sparked an inspiration for designing a table. Um, the other thing was to try to work with it and, and get a balance of movement and functionality uh, in the piece as well, you know, so in, in this case we're working with the polished stainless steel and the powder coated steel uh, combination. So it's, it's uh, another piece that was influenced by, uh, you know, the uh, nature and some of the aspects of uh, some of the animals that are in, uh, on the planet. Yeah. Now how can people visit and learn more about Richard Bennett? Uh, my, I have a studio workshop here in the uh, Midtown area. The address is 470 um, on Brainerd Street. Um, you know, I'm open and working in there uh, daily, six days a week. Um, the other way you can contact me is through uh, my website, which is uh, www.richardbennettdesigns.com. And uh, you can uh, take a view and take a look at some of the other works that we have. Well, Richard, thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure. Pleasure's mine. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. We'd like to welcome the founder and artistic director of Contexture Dance, Tracy Halloran Pearson, to Metro Arts Detroit. Welcome. Thank you so much. Now, can you give us a brief overview of your background as a dance artist and artistic director? Sure. Um, I actually started out as a rhythmic gymnast when I was a young kid. I was in a local Detroit club. And that, you had to take dance to be a rhythmic gymnast, and that kind of grew into me realizing that I loved teaching dance, and then that grew into me realizing that I loved choreographing, and then I realized that I needed a dance company if I really wanted to like expand my choreography and my art. How does your specific interest in dance make you unique? Um, I think my specific interest is that I'm very much into culture when it comes to dance, and culture meaning the life experiences of myself and the culture that I experienced growing up, but also the culture of my dancers. There's a lot of discussion in the studio about like things people have experienced in their life to kind of create a work. So we come up with like a topic, I want to create a work about this, and then we have an in-studio discussion about everybody's experiences with that. And then that helps me have a lot of creative thoughts about the way I want to shape the work. And so it's always kind of in the back of my mind, like life experiences, culture, what people are experiencing in their life, and how can I create a work about that? Now you're a Kresge Dance and Music Fellow. How has that award helped your career? Um, really, the biggest thing that it did for me was it gave me the confidence to realize that I am capable of creating things on a large scale. Um, I think people underestimate how important it is for an uh, artist to have confidence in themselves, and winning that award just kind of helped me realize I can do this. I can create things that people will be interested in. I can create things that are larger than just me. And so it was really all about building my confidence into being able to take it to the next level. Now you founded Contexture Dance mm -hmm. Detroit. Tell us about your company. Um, so my company is uh, a mixture of dancers from the Detroit metro area, um, but I think what makes it unique is that it's kind of a combination of styles. So I came up with the name contexture because it's an architectural term that means the combination of different styles together. And so when you look at my works, sometimes there's hip hop movement, sometimes there's modern, sometimes there's ballet, sometimes they're contemporary. So it's just kind of like this combination of all these styles that come together to create a work. It's not just one thing. It's always this mixing of styles and textures and all of these things. And so that's really what's going on in the studio space when we're creating work together. Now we're going to see a piece here from your company. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the piece we're going to see today? Sure. It's called Breath of Hope. And I created it in this kind of concept of feeling like, um, this urge to wanting to help someone or something or people in general. And so it actually started out as a quartet. And with those four dancers, we worked together to create this dance where we felt like it was about helping each other. And we've turned it into a duet for today's performance. And we worked with that same concept, the idea of like trying to breathe hope into the other people in the space, like through this energy, feeling like I can get through this, I can make it through whatever is so hard, and together we're going to do that. Now, how has Detroit influenced your work? Uh, it's, it is me. I grew up in the city of Detroit, and I grew up in a really diverse neighborhood, you know, culturally, racially, and financially, and I think it just kind of helped me have a really great understanding 
of how wonderful the differences in people can be and how that can create such an amazing neighborhood. I grew up in Rosedale Park and it's just such a huge part of who I am. And I think that's why when I'm in the rehearsal space, I'm always asking my dancers about their differences and about what makes them tick because to me that's just so wonderful and fascinating and I wanna celebrate it in my choreography. Now, how can people find out more about you and your company? Um, well, we have a Facebook page, so it's Context for Dance Detroit, and you can find us on Facebook. And uh, we have local performances in the, um, that we post on there, and you can see them. And so that would be the best way to find things out. We also have an Instagram page, and it's Context Your Dance. Okay, thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah. And now, here's Context Your Dance. You're watching Metro Arts Detroit, produced at Wayne State University. Memory rushes in, then washes you away. I am losing you to the sea. I'll break from the weight of my mind, but your ghost I will glad.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guest, The Whistle Stop Review, Richard Bennett and Tracy Halloran Pearson and her dancers for being here today. Remember, you can catch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Rachel Simone, reminding you to always remain open and embrace the arts in your community.